Hello and welcome. You're watching To The Point. On the day the Prime Minister expressed concern about the demolition of a church in Hisar and the rape of a nun in Bengal, the VHP has demanded, sorry, the VHP has defended both. Surendra Jain, the Joint General Secretary of the Parishad, claims the Hisar church was built to convert Hindus, whilst it's Christian culture to exploit nuns, not Hindu. In part two, the spokesperson of the Delhi Archdiocese will debate and contest these comments with the Parishad's official spokesperson. But first, the land acquisition ordinance which has become a major political controversy and a tug of war between the government and the opposition. For the government, the key concern is can the ordinance be converted into an act before it lapses or will it have to be reissued? For the opposition, who this evening walked to Rashtrapati Bhavan, the aim is to warn the president against reissuing it. So what's the future of the ordinance and the amendments it contains? That's the first debate tonight. Joining me now to discuss the politics behind the land acquisition ordinance is BJP spokesperson Sanjay Paul, Congress MP Mani Shankar Ayer, BJD MP Pinaki Mishra, the associate editor of the Hindu Smita Gupta and the well-known columnist and commentator Siddharth Bhatia. Siddharth Bhatia, with the opposition in the Rajya Sabha determined not to let the land acquisition bill pass and with the BJP now seriously considering proroguing parliament early so that they can then perhaps reissue the ordinance, do you accept that the land acquisition bill is in serious trouble? I, I think that's a given now. Let's not forget that it's not a question of 14 opposition parties who marched today, who have the numbers in parliament. It is also the Shiv Sena, uh, allies of the government who are uncomfortable with the provisions of this Land uh, Acquisition Act. So uh, there is just no way. What the Modi government has shown uh, is an inability to actually manage parliament, manage the opposition, come sit with them and work out some kind of compromise and in fact has created a situation where the opposition parties some of them cutting contradicting each other coming together and protesting against it so i can't see any way that it's probably going to go through parliament they will have to extend this ordinance in some way or find a via media or sit with the opposition and work out a deal i think okay. this is poor political management really when okay. you say, uh, come down to it because though there are provisions but this could be worked out with each other all right. And I think there, this government has you know, been faltering on more than one account, uh, one, one counter let's, in the let, last let, few months. Let me bring in Mani Shankarai. Mani Shankarai, you were part of the Congress MPs who marched to Rashtrapati Bhavan this evening. What is it that your leader said to the president and what response did you get from him? I'm afraid I wasn't there with her, so I don't know what she told the president. And uh, ipso facto, I didn't know what the president said in reply. But I can make a fair guess at what she may have said. Go ahead, tell us. Well, she probably pointed out that the act was conceived after a great deal of internal discussion, including in a standing committee of which I was a member and the chairperson was a BJP representative who is now the speaker of the lower house. The dialogue over this took place over several, over two or three years, not a sudden decision. And the BJP was very much party to the passage of the 2013 Act. And we just don't understand what has changed within the last 17 or 18 months that has persuaded the BJP that urgent amendments have to be brought in, that have to be announced through an ordinance. And uh, the amendments that they have brought in, in substance, do not appear to strengthen the pro-farmer, pro-labor provisions of the Act, but really facilitate an enormous abuse of the fundamental objectives of that Act okay. by favoring uh, those who are going to purchase, uh, those who are going to be the beneficiaries of such land acquisition. Sanjay Kaul, you're here with us today in your capacity as representative of the BJP. You're one of the spokesmen of the party. You've got a major problem on your hands. If this ordinance is not converted into an act by April the 5th, it will lapse. At that point, you either have to accept it's lapsed or you have to reissue it as an ordinance. Are you confident if you choose to reissue it, the president will actually agree? There's every chance that after this delegation of a united opposition comprising 14 parties, he may have serious reservations about reissuing the ordinance. 
Well, naturally, we'll have to see how that goes. But I think, as things stand, I do uh, I do believe that there is a uh, there is a there is a huge opportunity to look beyond the uh, the vacuous uh, argument that have been presented. And in fact, I would I would disagree with some of the uh, uh, people on the panel when they said that. This this bill was particularly drafted with a huge amount of care. I think the general uh, but, 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 understanding but before of the bill we, was drafted but, Sanjay Paul, Sanjay Paul, Before we talk about how the bill was drafted, let's answer the question I asked you. Are you confident if you need to reissue, the president will agree? Because I'm putting it to you that after these 14 parties unitedly met the president, he might have serious reservations about reissuing the ordinance. That's the question I'm asking you. No, I, I don't believe that uh, for, for, for very solid reasons. One is that uh, all the changes that we have sought or tried to make or have tried to accommodate are the result of consultations, not a desire on the part of the ruling party or the dispensation to push through a legislation which we particularly like uh, because of cosmetic reasons. You must understand that any change, any amendment has come actually. And here's the interesting thing. It is Congress, uh, state governments which have lobbied for these changes. Mm. And, and you're still and not answering my question. Been, uh, you're not answering my question. My question was specifically about what I have said that I am completely, I'm confident that that situation will not arise and that we will have the backing of the president in these matters. Well, let me bring in Pinaki Mishra, because Pinaki Mishra, you represent the BJD, which was a party that was not part of the 14 that marched to Rashtrapati Bhavan today. In the Lok Sabha, when the land acquisition amendments were being discussed and then voted upon, you chose to walk out rather than vote against. What will be your position if it comes to a vote in the Rajya Sabha? Will you walk out again and therefore make it easier? Or will you this time actually vote with the government and actually help them? Uh, you know, we have a few uh, uh, misgivings still about this bill, particularly with regard uh, to the doing away with the consent clause. Uh, which is why we chose to walk out in the Lok Sabha. Mm. But, uh, you know, I can't second guess, Karan, what the position will be on the day of voting in the Rajya Sabha. Uh, uh, I don't know if it will come to that at all, because I, th I think if the government is going to be clearly in a minority, uh, I don't think they want to bring it to the Rajya Sabha and have it voted down. Uh, so unless they bring it to the Rajya Sabha to take it to a select committee, I believe that the occasion for voting may not even arise in the Rajya Sabha, particularly because I think the government has the option, of course, as we've all read, of bringing it to the Rajya Sabha, having it voted down, and then taking it to a joint session. But then they have other concerns. I think they want uh, some sort of broad bipartisan consensus on the GST, for instance, uh, which is a constitutional amendment, so and which can't be done only by a, a, a you know a joint session of parliament. So I think in order to get some kind of accommodation on the GST with the opposition, the government may not want to take the risk of a okay. head-on confrontation of having the bill voted down in the Rajya Sabha and then take it to a joint session. So therefore... Uh, in which case, Smita Gupta, we have a very interesting situation developing because if the government is hesitant for other reasons not to have this bill voted down because it could affect the prospects of GST which the government is committed to, then... There is a real possibility that this ordinance will lapse on the 5th and the government will either have to accept that or go to the president to reissue it. Now you heard Sanjay Kaul say he doesn't believe that will happen and even if it did he's confident the president will reissue the ordinance. But I can suggest two reasons why the president might not. First of all, after 14 parties have met him, the president could actually believe reissuing would be a deliberate way of circumventing parliament and therefore against the spirit of democracy. And secondly, he might not believe there's any real urgency backing up this need. What's your feeling? What would happen in these circumstances if the government approaches the president to reissue? Well, uh, the technical position is that if the uh, government asks for the re-promulgation of the ordinance, the president has the right to send it back once. But if the government were to send it back a second time, the president would have to uh, promulgate the ordinance. That is the technical part of it. Uh, and we uh, mustn't forget that President Pranab Mukherjee is also a very correct person. He has expressed his displeasure both publicly and privately so far. So it is for the government to take that message. You know, Siddharth Bhatia, it's an invidious thing to try and second guess what the president will do. 
But so much now of the future of this ordinance hinges on Mr. Mukherjee's thinking. I know in the past, according to the Indian Express, there have been at least a dozen precedents of parliament being prorogued early so that issues can be handled by way of ordinance because they got stuck in parliament. But this time round, in these circumstances, after today's march, what do you think Mr. Mukherjee will do? Will he go by the precedents of the past or will he insist on acting in principle and use his own judgment instead? No, I, none of us can second guess what he's going to think. But as uh, it was pointed out that he is firstly a very corrupt man. Secondly, he's a very political man. His political antenna are extremely sharp. He has understood what's going on. He has understood that the opposition is real. It's growing. Some of the opposition is not even visible. As I said, the Shiv Sena, the, BJ, uh, the RJD, the BJD, etc. So he is going to try his level best to bring it to the notice of the government that perhaps the government should not push it beyond a point. Now, technically, he may have to at some stage give in. But then again, what happens? It's just an ordinance. So really speaking, again, it will boil down to the president may suggest to the government to try and work out a political solution. The politics of the whole thing is crucial here. The uh, prime minister is trying to push through something that he believes in, but he doesn't have the numbers and he doesn't have the uh, bipartisan. He doesn't even have support within the ranks. So clearly the only way out is a political solution. I can't say what the president will do, but I have a feeling somewhere this will be conveyed that, you know, try and work out some kind of solution. Okay. To this. Manishankar, I, it's no great secret that Congress is probably keen to send this bill to a select committee. Are you simply going to insist on that as a measure of delaying the bill? Or do you believe there are additional good reasons for sending it to a select committee? There are overwhelming reasons to send it to a select committee or perhaps even get this government to think in terms of sending it to a standing committee. And certainly if a select committee is set up, it should not be time bound, uh, especially into a very, very short period, as has happened with the coal and uh, mining bills, uh, of which also as a member of a, stand of a select committee. Um, I, I, I really think the government, seeing what happened today, and uh, making a fair guess at the president's view in the way in which uh, it has been done on this program should understand that they have put themselves into a bind and the intelligent thing at this stage would be either to withdraw the ordinance altogether and rethink the whole matter or to send it to a select committee without a time frame, without a narrow time frame in order to enable everybody there to work out how it could be done. They have several options other than just blindly moving ahead. Pinaki Mishra, as far back as June last year, just after the Modi government had been sworn in, your party leader and chief minister of Orissa publicly said that the BJD will constructively work with this government. And at the time, people interpreted that as a sign that measures like land acquisition ordinances would be supported by you. Now, if this is sent to a select committee, would you be in favor of that happening? Clearly, I should point out before you answer that the government will see that as an unfriendly gesture. They would see it as a delaying tactic. So where does your party stand on this issue of sending it to a select committee? You know, Karan, this is all about numbers. Our, our numbers in the Rajya Sabha, we have eight MPs. So in that sense, the government is in such a hopeless minority in the Rajya Sabha that it doesn't really matter what position we take. Look, on coal, on MMDR, we've supported the government. We've asked for certain concessions, they've been given, and we've given our constructive, you know, cooperative uh, support. So, in that sense, we have been completely forthcoming, we've been forthright, we've done what is in the interest of Orissa at all times, and uh, in fairness to the government, at, uh, you know, crucial times in, the, in these two bills, in the coal as well as in MMDR, when we needed some concessions, they've given it to us. So I can't today second guess what we would do if it went to a select committee. We'll have to see how far further the government is willing to concede in terms of consent, etc. But current the point is academic because look, this is a grandstanding on the part of the Congress. This is they've got too much at stake. This is Rahul Gandhi's entire you know sort of leitmotif in politics, which is 
he's gone to you know uh, Bata Parsol, he said no question at all of any uh, land acquisition as far as farmers are concerned. So the Congress cannot back down. The Congress therefore has taken such a grandstand position on this one. And the Prime Minister on his, you know, on his part also has obviously taken a very, very uh, importantly uh, fixated position because he feels that his Make in India campaign is completely based on these uh, reforms. So this is now an intractable position between the two parties. They are the two major parties. Okay. The Congress has the advantage of having taken on 13 other parties along with them. So they are in a clear majority in the Rajya Sabha. We will continue to support the government on issues where Orissa has to benefit. And uh, okay. I believe on this land issue, there are just a very few minor issues which can easily be done with even later on as per the rules. Okay. So therefore, it's nothing intractable on our part. Sanjay but the, called the government has to deal with the Congress and the Congress is paying Absolutely. them back in their own coin, you know, let dealing me, with let insurance in the past, etc. Let me bring in Sanjay Kaul. Sanjay Kaul, you may be getting a measure of support from a party like the BJD, but the BJD has only eight MPs in the Rajya Sabha and you have so few that those eight make no difference. The majority is probably going to insist on this bill going to a select committee. Are you prepared to accept that? that this bill is not going to get passed in the Rajya Sabha, it will probably get sent to a select committee, and that means interminable delays. Look, let us be prepared for, uh, for anything, but fact of the matter is this is fundamentally a matter of conviction. And I believe that a, a number of opposition parties are who we are talking to. And like everybody has pointed out, there is nothing unsurmountable here. All the points of, of discussion are open. The amendments have been made. The flexibility has been shown. If the Congress is taking up a position on this, which, uh, uh, which by its own token is going to look unreasonable, they will have to answer for it. As far as we are concerned, this is a necessary amendment. This is a bill that we need. That this I is a accept. connection on the earth, the earlier. So, so, I, 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 sorry? I accept that your conviction is very strong. The problem is your numbers are very weak. And so I'm saying to you, given the numbers, well, it's not Are about, you prepared it's not to accept? Current. It's almost it's inevitable this bill will go to a select committee and get interminably delayed. Are you prepared to accept that? No, obviously, uh, uh, this, the idea of basically uh, of, of, of getting around this whole, whole issue was not to delay the bill. The idea was that this must get through if we want India, we want the country moving on, we want the development uh, Well, that's your to view, Sanjay. Let's not, let's not, let's not get into, not the, the, let's not get into the ideological because there your view no, would be countered by Mani Shankar That's a different debate. You see, that's a different debate. No, your view would be countered by Mani Shankar one, one, one quick... One, no, no, one quick line. I said this is not only about the BJP's conviction, it's also about the conviction of other parties which are engaged equally with, well, with the country. 14 in the Rajya Sabha don't share that conviction. So let's not get into convictions because there are many that different change. views that on that. Change. That can change. Well, absolutely. You hope that it will. Change. But at the moment, it's getting tougher rather than getting easier. Svita Gupta, the problem is that if the bill does go to a select committee, which looks very likely, the government can't then hold a joint sitting. A joint sitting of parliament can only be held, A, if the bill is defeated by the Rajya Sabha, B, if the Rajya Sabha passes a different version to that passed by the Lok Sabha, and C, if the Rajya Sabha fails to act for six months. None of those three conditions are fulfilled as yet. So if the bill goes to a select committee, it will be stuck there, and the bill will be interminably delayed. And it could be delayed for a very long time. Well, uh, Karan, actually, I think that the government will, uh, prorogue, uh, will prorogue the House and uh, try for the ordinance because, meanwhile, if you talk to BJP MPs and even senior BJP ministers privately, they agree on one point that they have not been able to sell this bill not to the opposition but to people at large. And they have, in fact, uh, all BJP MPs have been told by the party's leadership that they must, when they go back to their constituencies, explain that what the BJP is trying to do is, in fact, not pro corporate but pro pharma. So, uh, and, and it's not, and, and besides that, you have all the RSS affiliates who have also opposed the uh, BJP bill in its present form. So I think the BJP is, on the one hand, going to uh, try and see whether they can change the perception of their changes, even as you okay. know they buy time for themselves. 
because the bjp is also very keen not to make the concessions for instance you know the concessions on consent and social impact and the five year uh, thing because they feel that these are all obstacles to uh, you know uh, as i think one of the other panelists uh, spoke okay. of the make in india absolutely uh, uh, campaign let so me put it I like this they are also buying time to see whether they can change the optics you know sita bhatia it's possible the bjp for whatever reason as smita points out wants to buy time as well so they would be happy with a certain delay even if they have to go down the ordinance route and risk the prime president sending it back at least once but at the end of the day can one escape can the bjp escape from the fact that this is becoming horribly embarrassing for the government this is a major critical reform and it's stumbling the government is stymied they simply don't know what to do so can they deny that they are hugely embarrassed today yeah you know two 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 uh, things have emerged uh, out of this uh, particular contentious issue one is that uh, as i mentioned earlier on two or three occasions in parliament uh, like in the insertion in the president's address <clears throat> the bjp has found that it has political management on the floor and in parliament has been rather weak so that's uh, the one part the second thing is when it comes to things like the optics now the narrative has been created and the land acquisition bill is not the only one of that that this is a pro corporate pro big business government so the embarrassment is coming also from that now they can't now suddenly go and start preaching to their constituents to say look we are actually pro farmer and all that that will take a huge effort to undo a lot of the damp perceptional damage that has happened okay. so clearly on this it's not a question of just how this government has gone on the back foot because of one mismanagement it is because this government has allowed itself to be put in a position where it is not seen as doing something which is pro common man pro farmer pro poor okay. and the congress naturally and the 14 parties have captured that so at this moment it has two big problems one is the structural quickly, and the legislative quickly. and the other is certainly the perceptual you know sanjay kaur it's not just the whole land acquisition bill that's in trouble the opposition are also demanding more time for the select committees considering the mines and minerals bill as well as the coal bill now if that extra time is granted you could find that these two also don't get converted into acts by the 5th and either lapse or you have to reissue them so the number of things that are going to ask president mukherjee to reissue could be growing and growing exponentially <laughs> don't bet on it yet i just i just say that you know i think i, I think we are moving towards there may be some lacuna even if i were to agree with some of the points made which regard with regard to say communication or perception but fact of the matter is each day we are progressing and, and what is really coming out is is that the 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 formulation of the of the new bill is basically based on the demands mm. of but we moved uh, on the states that we are talking we about that on. is the we product of consultation and similar now move on with me we moved on to mines and yeah, minerals so of I'm course those saying, two could be stuck as well precisely what i'm saying that the point is that don't bet on this a lot of the stuff that we are talking about today is is in public domain but a lot of the work that happens happens between parties and when we negotiate these positions we talk about the importance of these and and these parties are responsible parties they understand so okay. it's not as if you know all of it is basically just decided today and it's this this how it's going to pan out well let me bring in mani shankar ayer because i believe you are mr ayer on one of those select committees that has been set up to go into either the mines and minerals or the coal now muktar abbas nakvi said and he said this publicly that there was a gentleman's agreement with the opposition that the select committees will give their report by the 18th so that both bills could become law by the 20th now are you breaching that agreement when you're asking for extra time as digvijay singh has done or do you believe that in fact the agreement wasn't binding or do you believe that even if it was binding it's now impossible to fulfill which of the three is your position well i am only in the mmdr committee and the chairman there was railroading things because the unity that we have on the land acquisition bill was not evident in the mmdr bill and even during the proceedings of the mmdr bill in the select committee there were pressures that came from above on individual members who then changed their positions or just shut their traps so in these circumstances we have actually finished the bill and uh, it's going to be placed our report is through 
and the amendments that have been made in the bill are also through. Uh, it, I, I would imagine that Which that's means, going to have much easier Which means, as far as the MMDR passage. bill is concerned, in fact, there is no delay. It will be, the report will come through by the 18th and the bill can become law on the 20th. Very quickly, almost in a sentence, Mr. Ayer, is there likely to be an extension of the committee for the coal bill? I don't know. I'm not in the committee and this work has kept me so busy for so much time that I've had no time to really okay. inquire about me, what's happening in the counterpart. Let area. me bring in Pinaki Mishra. Pinaki Mishra, what's your feeling? It's now clear from what Mr. Ayer says that the Mines and Mineral Bill will be reported on on the 18th. It could therefore become law on the 20th. The government has no problem with that one. What about coal? Does the government have a problem on coal? DVJ Singh is publicly saying he wants more time. Will he get it? Or once again, will the report come in on time? A quick answer. I think coal might go through as well because a lot of the states are for it. But current fundamental to all this is the lack of bipartisanship in Indian politics. That's the fundamental issue. Sure. Ten months to the day today, really, since election results were out, you can see the bitterness of the Congress hasn't diminished. Today, when the finance minister was lamenting the slowdown of growth during the UPA, the leader of opposition sprung up and said, all because of you. You didn't support us on insurance, you didn't support us on FDI and retail, you never gave us a whiff of support for those five years of UPA2, which is why the country languished. Absolutely, now, but let's not Congress get into that. Is not going to make it easy, is not going to make it easy for this government to, uh, you know, give them bipartisan okay. support on issues of national interest. So therefore, really, you know, this is going to be split uh, very much of a stutter sort of Absolutely. stutter, stutter, splutter kind of Let me let, let me, let me bring in Smita Gupta. The, the what, Smita Gupta, truth. what has been established by both Pinaki Mishra and Mani Shankaraya that despite what we are reading in the papers, both the select committees will end up submitting their reports by the 18th and therefore there is every possibility that mines and mineral and coal will cease to be ordinances and become acts. How much comfort will that be for the government if those two ordinances get successfully converted? How much comfort will that be? A quick answer. Yeah, if I may play the devil's advocate today at the end of this se uh, half session, the, the BJP will have already, it's already passed, made three ordinances into acts of parliament. Coal and mines is also likely to be done by the 20th and if it looks it can't be, the house will be extended by three days to do so. So in the end, the BJP will only find itself isolated on uh, the land ordinance, which will not be such a bad record for it. Which suggests very quickly, Sanjay Kohl, that you could Even have something to smile about. Even though it has had an extremely tough session. It will be only on yeah. coal that you stumble and that could be a delay till such time as you grit your teeth and decide to go for a joint sitting and perhaps sacrifice GST if you have to. But on others, although things look a little diabolical today, the suggestion that's coming through on this panel is that you'll get mines and mineral and you'll get coal. Will that be of comfort or will that still be disappointing? A quick answer, Sanjay. No, I don't think we look at it that way. This is this is the work we do. We have to get on with it. And the fact of the matter is, I have greater faith in the in the in the parties that we are dealing with. And I believe that, uh, uh, irrespective of differences, which may be for various reasons, not really germane to the issue or actually genuine, uh, I believe that we will still be working together because I think this is the okay. need of the hour, the need of the nation. It's basically to move fast on the land acquisition bill. I think we'll get there too. All right, you may be right, but at the moment it certainly looks as if the obstacle is going to be greater than the effort you can put into it, but it does look as if it's a mineral, you will end up having your way. My thanks to all my guests for joining me. <laughs>